Right, so in that 4.2, what you are asked to, the theory that is um, tested here is, of course, everything on this diagram, on the reversible X equilibrium as a function of temperature line. We've got our adiabatic energy balances, etc., etc. So this is an exothermic reaction. The first question where you have to solve for the equilibrium X for an adiabatic inlet. So this is your inlet position. And if you want to visualize it, you don't have to solve it graphically, but you can actually draw your energy balance on your X equilibrium line figure. But if you want to solve it without uh, constructing the graph, what you have to solve simultaneously, um, you have two unknowns, you've got a temperature and you've got an X value. So you need two equations. The first equation is, of course, your adiabatic energy balance. T is equal to T naught, blah, 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 blah. That is specified. This is an unknown, and your X value will be an unknown after you constructed that um, equation for the energy balance. And the second equation that you have to solve is where the right goes equal to zero. And you have to express your right as a function, of course, of X and T. So that you can do by writing your concentrations in terms of Fa naught and X and writing your K in terms of temperature and your KC in terms of temperature. So in F solve, if you want to do that, if you want to solve them simultaneously, my suggestion is to just solve for X. So I have a solver that just solves for X. It makes it just easier to find uh, the correct spot. So you can then, once you have guessed X, you can calculate your temperature using your energy balance. Using that temperature, you have an algebraic equation for K, one for K, and then you're, you have your right expression. And when this thing goes to zero, you know you have solved your X. So you have to return your right equation. Uh, to find the X value where you achieve equilibrium conversion. And um, so the answers are published. I'm going to, if I try to recall them out of my head, I'm going to make a mistake. Please note the answers published under, in the general channel. You can go and have a look there. And you can also, I think it's 54% that you finally uh, around there. So, um, yes. This is, you can also, in this case, it's a very easy equation, actually, when you solve your uh, right equation to set it equal to zero, you end up with that X equilibrium equation that is actually published in my slides. So if you want to construct this line, you can, for a range of T values, for a range of T values, you can solve KC because your X equilibrium is just a function of KC, and then you can plot X equilibrium. Go to the slides, the equation you have to use for X equilibrium because this is a simple isomerization reaction where A reversibly goes to B. So uh, make sure that you understand where it comes from. It comes from setting the right equal to zero, um, but then I can solve that uh, that quite easily for a T range of values, I can construct this X equilibrium line if you want to. And then it's very nice if you can also construct your adiabatic energy balance to show that for any reactor, once again, that is the limit. So therefore in question C, let's just answer question C now. If I give you an adiabatic PFR and I ask for 70% conversion, I am being extremely mean because I want you to tell me that it is, you are asking me to do something that is impossible. It is like levitating. You are asking me to levitate um, and break the rules of thermodynamics, and that is not possible. That is the answer for question C. It, it's actually question C and question A are linked uh, because of this equilibrium limitation. Questions on this part? Okay, so now, um, if I now want to, you are limited. So we are now designing, we are making some design decisions. But some of the decisions were already taken on our behalf. So we are limited, our inlet is fixed. Normally when you design, that will be the case. So you will have an inlet T naught, you will even have an FA naught, and in this case, also have some inert uh, that flows into your reactor. You are limited 
by the fact that you are space if the specification says you can have two reactors operating in series with intercooling so i have my temperature two here uh, sorry this is temperature one sorry this is temperature one which is also the operating temperature of my first reactor then i can cool it to an unspecified t02 and operating temperature of reactor 2 also not specified this temperature is not specified in addition the volumes of my two reactors volume 1 and volume 2 are not specified what is specified is the overall conversion you know that you must achieve a 70 percent conversion so you know your molar flow rate out of the second reactor. There's no separation. It's a liquid phase reaction. So we are going to assume that Q stays constant. So I can calculate the concentration in that reactor. And you are asked now actually to design this, to specify the volumes, to specify this operating temperature, to specify the inlet temperature and the operating temperature of that reactor. Of course, taking cognizance of the rules or the boundaries in which you must operate. Each of these two reactors must operate adiabatically. So you know this is adiabatic, so the only heat flow that I'm allowed is actually from this um, cooler. So let's just look at the cooler. For the cooler, if I do the energy balance, Q is going to be equal to Dow of my flowing streams and in this case there are no reactions so the only reason why the flowing streams will change it will be because of their um, change in temperature so if I had a mass flow rate and the mass based heat capacity it would just simply be equal to T02 minus the operating temperature in the reactor one so of course we can write this as FA0 CPA plus F I, the inert node CP of the inert. Right, the reason why we can do that is because the del CP of the reaction is equal to zero. This must give you the same answer as when you substitute FI1 CPA plus FB1 CPB plus FI CPI. So whether you update it to, to, to the corresponding flow rates over there, whether you use the inlet conditions, because this is true, it must give you the same answer. So when we want to solve Q, I have to solve for T0, 2, the inlet, new inlet temperature there, and I have to solve for that. Right, so um, questions on this. Okay. Right. Remember when you write the semester test is to write this down, even if you don't know what these values are, at least you can get a mark for writing down. This is how I will solve it. I realize it's an unknown. I have to figure out equations, uh, enough equations to solve all the unknowns in my problem set. Right. So remember that when we design a yes, Angela, go for it. When getting the inlet to the second reactor, the inlet temperature, um, because you know yes. the conversion over the second reactor, um, yes. would you uh, calculate the inlet temperature such that you have a maximum rate in the second reactor, or how yes. else would you get that inlet temperature? Yes, definitely. So we, that's what we are going to do now, is to say, how do I, now these unknowns here, so I'm going to clean the screen again and rewrite everything. These values, these parameters that are unknown, and I've got an additional unknown here, the outlet, because I don't know the conversion of this reactor. That wasn't specified. So I'm supposed to calculate its volume, its outlet molar flow rate, which is a function of the conversion of that reactor, as well as its operating temperature. So three unknowns when I consider this reaction. Right? Reactor, sorry. And because the inlet here, everything is fixed. Uh, in that reactor, once I've solved for the molar flow rate out, this is at least known, the inlet molar flow rate. But if I consider reactor two, once again, I have three unknowns. I've got the temperature, temperature, um, and I also have that one. Okay, so Zion, I will pay attention to your question uh, in a bit. I noticed it. Right, so let's just clear this up. See, how are we going to 
solve this issue and then we'll get to the multiplicity stuff. So in my first reactor, what do I know? I know that it must operate along this adiabatic energy balance line, given a fixed inlet value. So somewhere on this line, I must find the point where the is at a maximum. So T naught given fixed. So just let's just work with our first reactor. We need equations to solve for Fi1. We need an equation to solve for T1, the operating temperature of the reactor, and we need to find the volume. So we've got three unknowns and we need three equations. This energy balance is certainly one equation. So we know the temperature, operating temperature, will depend on plus some function of x of a over reactor 1. And that will give me the molar flow rate out there. So there is my two unknowns, one equation. The second equation I have is my mole balance. And I have my Fa naught that was specified. My Fa out, I don't know, but I can write this. I have an equation where I can write that as a function of the conversion over my reactor. And then I've got my rate, and this is the heavy one times the volume. So in the right, it is a very nonlinear function of X and temperature and volume. But in essence, I have three equations and I have to, uh, sorry, what I know, I have two, two equations. Sorry, 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 this is still two. Now I'm confusing myself. This is just the second equation. Right? This is just the second equation. Apologies, backtrack, backtrack. This is just the second equation. And I've got X and T and volume. That is an unknown. The third equation is the one that in words says minimize the volume. Minimize the volume. In words, it says that. In maths, it says change the rate. What is the rate? So that if I change X and temperature so along this adiabatic line, so I want the rate to go to maximum. Okay, So I want the rate to go to a maximum. And in this case, I'm going to vary it along, so almost with the, the, with the volume, so that I can find the minimum in the volume and the maximum in the rate. So I'm now stuck here because you change the temperature and you change X, but along that adiabatic energy balance. So I want to find this point where the rate goes to zero. So where the change in the rate, the slope in the rate goes to zero, or the rate goes to a maximum. That is a legit extra equation that if I am more skilled at mathematics, I could be able to, um, you know, produce maybe okay, from that very nonlinear right expression. But the way we are going to attack it is to say, all right, I want to solve for the maximum in the right. So all where min or a goes to a maximum. I know the right must follow a very specific temperature x relationship. Okay, I know my X values must be less than the equilibrium value. So the suggestion is the following. Choose a lint space of X values that is in the range from zero to that X equilibrium. Okay, for each X, you can solve the temperature using your energy balance. Equation one used. Once I have a temperature, I can use that to calculate my K and my KC value. And for each X, the FA over Q and FB over Q, or the concentration in my reactor, is known. Right, so this will allow me to solve for the rate. And then I plot this rate. You can plot, plot it. Plotting is a very good idea. It's not compulsory to plot. I can plot the rate as a function of either X or temperature. And now th things like this happen. People get this kind of graph. It looks like this and then this. Looks like that. It says, oh, but I don't observe a maximum in the rate. And it is because your X value that you chose here jumps up a cliff. And really, it is a seriously significant cliff. So you are missing some uh, definition 
in what is actually happening in that part. So in other words, this drop is like in the millions, 10 to the 10 to the 6. Whereas you write that you are actually interested in goes from 0 to about 0 0.14. So you will not see that change. So if you get graphs that look like this, my suggestion is change your X range values. Okay, So even if maybe you didn't solve for that X, but you get this kind of shape, remember, it's not necessarily the case that you are wrong. Just change it so that, and you can even make it smaller, smaller, and you will see that it may look like this. And then suddenly, when you make it really small, that it's a very um, obvious, uh, the scale, in other words, that you use is going to be a much better defined so that you can see that you have a maximum in that rate. And then, of course, we use the np.max function. Uh, to find that, uh, yes, you can set the limits as well. Um, what X if you don't have KC? Okay, but look, I remember on your previous figure, in your previous figure when we did this, in A, you solved that along this adiabatic energy balance. So you know what the maximum is along this line. You know X can only go from zero to, don't worry, lots of people are wondering about this, to the 0 0.54. Okay, so I have my limits of X values, but if you know, for instance, just you're crazy and you say this thing is going to go from 0 to 1, you are going to get this graph. Okay, and the, by changing this maximum limit, making it smaller, 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 you will be able to see, oh, this is actually what happens to my graph. And there at x is equal to 0 0.54, it intersects the right is equal to 0 line. Okay, so now that I can find my maximum in the right, I can size my volume. Right. Because maximum in the right will correspond to a specific X value and the X will give me a specific temperature value for that reactor. So in my mole balance, the only unknown remaining will be the volume. Right. So now for my first reactor, I solved for the operating temperature because the temperature and the X value, which corresponds to the molar flow rate of everything out of that, is joined at the hip when I find that maximum in the right. They are related to each other by this energy balance, this linear energy balance. They are not independent of each other. So now that I've found that, the only unknown is my volume, and I've solved everything, all three my unknowns, for that first reactor. Can I have questions on this? crystal clear or go and try it please go and apply it it's please don't use this the oh yes method of studying oh yes oh yes oh yes and it comes to the test and it's not really oh yes because it, the, the, the practice in applying the techniques uh, really does not come for free it comes from hours spent making mistakes silly mistakes and figuring out where you are likely to make silly mistakes that's just my warning okay so now let's get to angelo's question so now for the second reactor, you were asked actually to, now I know what this temperature 1 is, I know x in 1, so I can find this Fa, I can find this molar flow rate. And I've got my, there, and the temperature in to 2 will now determine this duty from my heat exchanger. But this is not specified, this is an unknown, and the temperature, shucks, Temperature out here, temperature 2, the operating temperature of 2 is not specified. However, if A from 2 is specified because you were given a conversion of 70%. So I can calculate that. I know my molar fl uh, volumetric flow rate. Okay, let's not confuse this with, let's just have a small Q there. So I can calculate the concentration of A in that reactor and I can calculate the concentration of B in that reactor. Right, so now I have to specify the three things I have to solve for is temperature in, operating temperature, as well as the volume of that reactor. And my aim or my task is to minimize this volume. And once again, that corresponds to maximizing a rate. 
So somehow we are going to have to do a calculation where I maximize a rate. Okay, so if I now look at my equations, once again, I will have the energy balance. Very careful with your energy balance for that reactor. Chances are, if you get incorrect values, is that you made a mistake there. So it is the temperature 2 is equal to T naught 2 min epsilon over reactor 2, okay, times del H of the reaction divided by sum, and I can still use everything that comes in. Because this is that MCP value that stays constant. So you can still use everything that comes in, must still be, uh, is still fed with that. Or I can change that to FA, CPA, A1, FB1, CPB plus the inert. Right, so just remember that your energy carrying capacity through all your reactor trains doesn't change because of this del CP reaction, which is. Um, not changing. Okay, so and this epsilon value, that's why I like using the epsilon value, let's just use a different color, is to say what is epsilon? It is del of Fa, okay, over my reactor and I base it on A over reactor 2 divided by its stoichiometric number in my um, react, in my uh, stoichiometry and this is going to be equal to Fa minus Fa1 divided by minus 1. So easiest for me to write it like that instead of trying to have an X2 star which is based on this inlet conditions. Uh, the, the, it's a e easy to m make a mistake in your energy balance in terms of the amount of energy that's released. So this if I want, if you want to write it in terms of the conversion, will of course be 1 minus x over reactor 1. And if I 2 will be if I 0 times 1 minus x over reactor 2. And when I now talk about conversion, I base it on the inlet molar flow right here into reactor 2. So just be careful when you calculate your energy balance. When you calculate that epsilon term that you are really actually using the motor flow rates as they come into and go out of that reactor. Okay, so it seems like we are ready for a cleanup again. Yes, we are ready for a cleanup. So if I now um, write my three anodes, I've got T02. I've got the operating temperature of reactor 2 and I've got the volume. Let's write our equations. Once again, you were told that that reactor must operate adiabatically. So I have my energy balance, T2 equal T02, that one that I just wrote, divided by energy carrying capacity, blah, blah, uh, times del H of the reaction. That's the epsilon just over reactor 2, no? just over that reactor. So in that equation, I've got my unknowns there. My epsilon value, however, for that reactor will now be known because I know the inlet molar flow rate and I know the outlet molar flow rate. So this term is a known parameter. In my mole balance, once again, in my mole balance, I know the inlet to that reactor and I know the outlet of that reactor. This I know because I've solved for reactor 1. That's the outlet of the reactor 1. And the Fa2 is specified because I was given a conversion. And then we've got our rate times volume equal to 0. The only unknown in the rate is the temperature which will mean that, okay, of course, you can always define your unknowns differently because K and KC are unknowns, but we are all, they are all a function of that temperature, which is the temperature too. So now I've got two equations with two unknowns. So I've got my temperature, sorry, three unknowns there and the volume there. I need a different equation. And the one that I want to solve in this case is if you watch the videos, I appreciate you watching the videos, this X versus temperature diagram. If we looked at the ISO rate lines, each X in that video, we said for each X, there is a maximum point somewhere in the rate. For each X, I can get a temperature where the rate will go to a maximum. And it's this line that we are busy exploring when we are solving for the rate in that second reactor. So our last and third equation, so this is number one, this is number two, and number three is how does the rate change 
with temperature, but I'm keeping X constant. And that I want to be equal to zero because I want to find that if I, therefore what I am considering is I'm considering a rate versus temperature growth at an X value. And I expect it to do that, to go up to a maximum and then to drop into the ocean. And I am looking for that point. And so it's no need, uh, that's the operating temperature. This is the operating temperature. So I'm substituting the operating temperature in the right, if you are easy to please or not. Okay, so there, at that point there, oh, this is the equation that I'm busy solving because that is where that slope goes to zero. So we are not going to do that, or you may. I see some of you are very brave. I am not, th this is with, uh, what I am implementing here, but I am going to do it graphically and just ask Python then to solve that right for me. At a given cons x, remember x marks a concentration in my right equation. So at a given concentration, I vary the temperature. And once again, your figures can look weird and wonky depending on the temperature range that you choose. Once again, if you find something that looks like this, uh, there. It's like, you know, yes, I'm drawing little blocks. It's probably because you are, or, or sorry, that will more likely look like that. It's because look at your R values, inspect them over there. If it crosses the zero line, what you've done is you chose a temperature range that goes over the thou shalt not pass line and you are being punished for it. Okay, um, so you may not necessarily know what that temperature is where equilibrium is, um, but you can select, look at your, if you've got, if you constructed this figure, you can select decent ranges. At least you must start at the temperature that is, you know, in the range of a slightly less than your original temperature naught value that was specified. Make it a little bit colder and go a little bit warmer. So I would suggest using that temperature at least as your first, if you have a, so you, just to um, consolidate, you are going to choose a range of temperature values. And for each temperature, you're going to calculate Kc and K, and therefore you're right. Because the X is fixed, the conversion is fixed. So if you see this happening, just zoom in a bit by changing your temperature ranges, or if you want to set the limits, that's fine. If you actually ask Python to find that RA max, NP dot max in min RA, it will find it, even if your graph looks like a, let's not be rude in a recording, even if your graph doesn't look nice, it is still going to find it, that maximum value. So even that, just the fact that you cannot see it doesn't mean that Python cannot see it. Okay, and we will find, uh, you will see that there may be some discrepancy in the answers because it depends on what was this range that you specified. And if you learn space it, what was the increments? Did you use 1,000 increments? Did you use the default value of 100? Okay, so I see I received a few questions. Let me just go and um, see. Uh, is this right operating temperature? We answered that. Uh, Zion had a question. Uh, Zion. Sure, Zion, would you mind copy and pasting your question again? I now lost track of your question somewhere. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so while Zion is busy, okay, so Angelo, you can do the exact same procedure but maximizing. Yes, you can do that as well. It should work. It should work. So can you see Angelo? I don't know. That, can you see the um, chats when you watch the recordings? Angelo asked if he if he varies the inlet temperature to the reactor. So he, instead of choosing an operating temperature range, he varies the inlet temperature. With each inlet temperature, you can solve for a T2 value, and for each T2, he can calculate the rate. So he can, in fact, by changing plot construct the graph versus the operating temperature into, and it should work provided that your energy balance and your mole balance is correct. It must work. Okay, so Xeon, uh, for B, I use sidebar's minimize function than when you gave what you gave. Okay, maybe Xeon, maybe you can contact me um, off, off recording and we can sort that out. To, because that's a very difficult answer for me now to say that is why it gives the minimum, that it gives a wrong um, 
answer. So please just share in Slack. I will have a look there. Is that okay, Zian? Okay. Right. Uh, cool. Anybody else with some more? Okay, thanks. Anybody else with some questions on this? Uh, that. That 4.2. Uh, when you always when you approach problems remember there are stuff that you when we are going to go into more of design mode after the semester test there are more stuff that you are going to have to specify without solving right in this case you couldn't actually specify anything uh, well yes you had to specify that inlet temperature but it was still subjected to the limit that your reactor operates adiabatically now I can say you can specify this and you have a non adiabatic reactor so some Q must flow from it and it must find a value there so now the amount of unknowns doesn't match the amount of equations so you will have to come up with a design and say if I vary this this is how this changes this is how I optimize my design uh, let me just check Roger had a question uh, over the second yes absolutely okay let me show you let me show you something here that's a very good question roger asked with the gradient be exactly the same so i don't expect you to draw this figure but if i now construct what is actually happening this is now for this including the multiplicity plots if you should construct what is actually happening in this uh, reacting system let's just get a pointer okay there we go is i um after this energy balance I could draw from the start and this line I could draw from the start after I sized this reactor this equal this here okay so it's not annotated perfectly let me just show you this is my mole balance lines these are my mole balance lines for my two reactors and I used x based on the FA naught to both reactors so I didn't have an incremental energy balance and if I do that the slope of the energy balance will be exactly the same in both reactors if you inspect the shape of that energy balance T naught man epsilon del H reaction divided by that energy carrying capacity and this is not going to change so in other words that slope must remain exactly the same it's just the inlet the T naught values that is going to change right um, so if I now uh, construct these figures I can see that uh, how did I go about constructing them to test for this multiplicity in the second um, question well last which is a, 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 a thank you for reminding me Roger I was actually I wanted to share um, it looks like the mole balance reaches a peak oh now it disappeared XA yeah questions I think that in my graph it looks like the mole balance reaches a peak and decreases for a, why does that happen because your reactor knows that thou shalt not pass line because in your mole balance you have the right equation so this is my mole balance there it does the same it goes to a maximum possible so this is for a volume reactor there's a possible maximum conversion it follows that line there where the right goes to zero for and let me just get a different color for our irreversible reactions that we did in that too, the mole balance will just do that and it will go to one. But the mole balance knows if you do it correctly, this shape will fall out for that specific volume of reactor one. So when you construct this mole balance, um, the green line, it's very difficult to, if you want to say, so plotted here is I need a range of temperature values call it temperature mole balance values and the corresponding x mole balance values okay so just by solving the mole balance so now I don't have that linear uh, energy balance line so my suggestion is if I solve the mole balance in the right expression it's a very non-linear function of 
temperature, but it's a linear function in x. So my mole balance is Fi0 minus Fi0 1 minus x1 for reactor 1, and then I've got my right equation that's got x1 x in and it's got that temperature in. It's rather choose a realistic range of temperature values. What is the realistic range of temperature values? From there to there, or from there to the operating point in your reactor. And then with each temperature, go to your calculate the Kc value and the K value in your right equation. And then you solve for X from your mole balance. It's a linear equation, so you can actually make it the, the uh, subject of that equation. Or if you're lazy like me, if solve doesn't struggle with that at all. So I had great success with using a four loop for temperature in my temperature range and append for uh, X values that I solved so that I can plot this. Okay. This, of course, I can start. Um, I can start uh, the second. This is now the amount of cooling. This is that operating point that you found. But if you inspect that reactor, it actually has three operating um, positions. So there's some instability here. It's not. Uh, part of the scope of this question, but it's very good practice if you can, in fact, get this line and to think about how the hell can I change this now. And then this is the amount of, this is my intercooler where I don't have any reaction, so my temp, uh, x value stays the same at that operating x. So now when I want to design my mole balance, I can once again, I can start with a temperature range and uh, construct this uh, second figure. Um, uh, what else can I tell you? The energy balance, remember, it will just start at a T naught on this figure. See if you can construct this second line. Um, you will, if you go into the semester test, not being able to construct these mole balances uh, for uh, the reversible reactions. For, for just uh, irreversible reactions, you must be able to do it. But for the reversible reactions, if you're stuck to get this figure, this uh, figure that I just posted here, um, you will not be penalized. Sure, I think we are out of time. Uh, okay, so Sean is fine. Zian will contact me. Any questions that I missed, guys? Doesn't stay the same. We just ensured. Uh, okay, some misconception that I spot here in your reasoning, Anna. So remember, when we first started constructing this, if you have to go, that's fine. I will keep the recording running. Now, um, when we constructed this first, when we did it in, in uh, that too for our irreversible reactions, for a specific energy balance and mole balance, there's only one operating point. So you actually found that point in the pre previous um, procedure that I discussed for that 4.2b by maximizing the rate for the 70% conversion. All I now want to see is if I have my mole balance, is it possible that this energy balance intercepts it at a different position as well? So it's not as if you have multiple possible operating points in your CSDR. Only if I change my energy balance will I be able to operate at that point. CSDR, remember, is um, its characteristic is that it has got one operating point, one X, one temperature. Right. That sounds like a song. I think lyrics to a song. Okay, but uh, sidetracked it. So if, I, if you now look at this... Uh, where it intersects at the operating point. So I'm not sure whether I misinterpreted your question. Um, the, the conversion there stays the same. It is that just that maybe I need to check that with this energy balance. It, so if the energy balance, for instance, looks like that. Oh, let me get a different color. We'll just clear everything. Um, if my energy balance followed this line, for instance there. Then I would say, oops, a daisy, I sized for that, but unbeknownst to me, because I didn't check for it, I can run into operating um, issues because of this multiplicity in my reactor. Oh no, happy, still here. Cool. All right. Um, question with the second reactor. Yes. So, 
second reactor, let's just consolidate in the second reactor. Uh, he asked, want to just to explain again how I get this operating temperature. So how do I get this operating temperature over there? Is I know the X. That is fixed. I cannot shift that line. Right? I have no control over that line. I want to find the point, and it's got nothing to do with this green line. Eh? It's got to do with these iso -right lines in my reactor. I want to change the temperature. And remember, the temperature here is the operating temperature in my reactor. It is not the inlet temperature to the reactor. So what I did, let me explain the two different approaches. I varied this temperature along this possible range of, uh, of temperature values. And I calculated the rate for each temperature at an X of 0 0.7. And I found the point where that rate versus temperature at a maximum. And then I said, there, I want this energy balance to intersect that line here. So I didn't know this inlet temperature. I didn't know this inlet temperature. But I know that I can shift this energy balance. I can shift my energy balance around by changing this inlet temperature. So I know it is up there. I know the slope. And therefore, just by almost going backwards. And this is what you do when you calculate that. Temperature 2 is now known. That is fixed. And I've got my T02. Um, Epsilon over reactor to del H over that oops a daisy sum of F F in my word CPI values. Okay, so this is how you can one approach. Another approach is to shift this blue line, to shift the inlet, and you know this slope. You know the slope. This is what Angela wanted to do. And he knows the slope, so he's going to shift that until that line there intersects the point where the temperature, where the rate is at a maximum. I'm correct in saying that now, Angelo, if you're still here. Okay, right. Okay, good luck with it. I'm going to post something in general on the semester test, which I will also repeat in ClickUp, okay? And you can ask questions about the semester test, but about in Ask Elizabeth about the um, procedures and the protocols. I'm going to give you two hours and 45 minutes, including the time to upload. And I will watch you while you are writing. And if I see that um, it is really an issue, I may give you 10 minutes injury time. So um, try to finish within that, but there's an option of a 10 minutes injury time, which of course you will use. So I might just have give, give, you, give it to you from the start. All the best for your test week, but I will see you tomorrow in our half past seven discussion clause. Let me just 